thank you all for joining us today for our panel on cybersecurity, the discipline of vigilance. It's the second panel of our speaker series, bringing together executives, entrepreneurs, and investors, many from right here in Philadelphia, to discuss market. Welcome, and thank you all for joining us today for our panel on cybersecurity, the discipline of vigilance. It's the second panel of our speaker series, bringing together executives, entrepreneurs, and investors, many from right here in Philadelphia, to discuss market disruption, first-hand experiences leading businesses, and opportunities for investable growth. The series is brought to you by Thai Philadelphia, and with me is Doc Pargi, president of Thai Philly, and partner at venture capital firm, Sri Capital, to say a few words. Doc? Thank you, Himesh. Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Doc Pargi. I'm the president of Thai Philadelphia. I'd like to welcome, I'd like to welcome you to our second speaker series. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Thai is a global organization uh, that supports entrepreneurship with over 15,000 members spread across 61 chapters in 14 countries. Uh, Thai has been supporting entrepreneurs by offering education, mentorship, networking, and funding opportunities. Uh, Thai's charter members, which number over 3,000 globally, are the backbone of every chapter. Uh, charter members, what we call CMs, are successful high-profile entrepreneurs, investors, and corporate executives who have reached a stage in their professional life when they are ready, willing, and able to contribute to fellow members and the entrepreneurial community. In our short existence, the Philadelphia chapter uh, has over 40 charter members uh, consisting of basically a who's who of successful members of the local entrepreneurial ecosystem. They drive our, they drive our uh, successful program that many of you have likely attended, programs such as Top Pitch in partnership with Pact and Comcast, Thai Young Entrepreneurs, and the ICON event which honors highly successful entrepreneurs uh, with recent exits are but a few examples. So thank you again for coming. And today we welcome you to uh, our speaker series, Cybersecurity, uh, the Disciplines of Vigilance. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Himesh Bish, the CEO of Sinecor. Thank you, Himesh. Thank you, Doc. Cyber attacks are getting more sophisticated, more frequent, more disruptive targeting an increasing surface area of our devices, networks, and services, whether it's government institutions, software companies, retailers, public utilities, we've all been compromised. In a Cisco survey I saw recently, 61% of respondents reported that their organization experienced a jump of more than 25% in cyber threats since the start of the pandemic. The cost of ransomware in 2020 was estimated at over $20 billion. What does this mean for your business? What does this mean for entrepreneurs and investors? To discuss this and more, we have an incredible panel today. Tim McKnight is the EVP and Chief Security Officer of SAP. SAP's enterprise application software touches 77% of the world's transaction revenue. Craig Conway is the global head of modern banking technology at FIS. FIS serves over 20,000 clients in over 1 million merchant locations around the world. And Jason McGuinness is the president and COO of Silver Sky. Silver Sky provides managed cybersecurity solutions to thousands of mid sized and larger companies. Before I go around the table to our panelists, a note to our audience. Please participate as best as a Zoom webinar allows. Enter your questions or comments in the Q&A tab in Zoom, and I will attempt to weave them into the discussion and we'll leave time at the end for the panelists to address your questions directly. Okay, let's go around the virtual table. Tim, perhaps starting with you. Could you introduce yourself, tell us about your role, and perhaps talk about how you have seen cyber threats evolve over the years. Thanks, Amesh, and thank you for the opportunity. Um, hopefully you can hear me well. Uh, a few things, yeah, I'm the Chief Security Officer for uh, SAP, so what does that mean? Uh, I actually have it all uh, underneath me, both from physical security, executive protection, 
personnel security, travel security, but also cyber security and also how we build uh, security into the, the features uh, features of our products. So, uh, you know, uh, every day is a unique and different day, which is exciting for me. Um, I work for the CEO, uh, Christian Klein. That's how important security is to us uh, here at SAP. And clearly we're hearing that loud and clear from our uh, customers. Uh, I think last year I had 180 customer calls personally. Um, and uh, security is almost always in, a, in the top one to three position uh, of priority for, for our customers. Um, yeah, as you heard, we're a business software company. Um, uh, so we are very focused on making sure we protect our, our, uh, our customers' data, uh, as well as our shareholders uh, and uh, our employees. So uh, in terms of what I've seen, so uh, yeah, I guess I, yeah, geez, I think uh, going into 30 years of uh, FBI for about 10, 20 years in industry, holy cow, it goes fast. Um, I can certainly say in the last 20 years as a CISO or a CSO, in industry, um, it's really, it's a boardroom issue and challenge. Uh, I can certainly tell you in the last seven years in particular, the amount of time uh, I have spent uh, with board members has gone up probably fourfold from, we'll see you uh, once uh, to maybe twice a year to uh, you're a standing member of the agenda uh, and, and you're asked to, periodically provide deep dives uh, into areas where they have the greatest concern. Apologies, my printer uh, is a shared printer in my office here, so it's currently being used by someone. So hopefully somebody in my family. But uh, <laughs> with that said, um, you know, I can certainly say it's a top priority from a business perspective. Um, I, I think the other things, you know, so I can give the, the other uh, members of the panel some time and not be a hog here is, it's gone from, you know, sort of being a nuisance, you know, when I first started as a CISO, it was, I was sort of the network security guy. Um, we were dealing with worms that were outbreaks on our networks, and it was just about cleaning up and patching and, and all that. Um, now I'd say it's much more serious, right? I mean, it's everything from you can have real kinetic effect, you know, life support in a hospital. Um, it can be about intellectual property theft uh, and, and subsidizing your nation's uh, interests by stealing the intellectual property of others. Um, it's geopolitical. Uh, I can certainly say it's, it's, it's more geopolitical now than it ever has been. And uh, certainly my view is if you're a nation state and you don't have a capability today, um, you might want to just get out of the business altogether. It's, it's so lucrative uh, in terms of cyber uh, and the ability to steal uh, you know information uh, put yourself in a better position that uh, unfortunately those who are not good actors um, are benefiting by attacking companies like ours and others and stealing intellectual property um, as you've seen in some of the recent events with solar winds um, and some of the ransomware attacks and others so it's uh, I, I, I certainly would have lost money 20 years ago. I would have thought it would have gotten a whole lot better, but I, clearly I think the challenges have just gotten more and more challenging throughout the years. But thanks for having me here. Uh, thank you, Tim. Um, Craig? Yeah, hello, Craig Conway. Um, I'm currently responsible for modern banking technology at FIS, and FIS is maybe one of the top fintechs in the world. Um, we um, provide banking, software, payments processing, merchant processing, and capital market software and services. Um, and historically, I've been involved in payments companies, financial technology companies like First Data Corporation, um, supply chain organizations like Livingston International, and telecommunications companies like Transaction Network Services. All these companies uh, are global. They all store, process, and protect a, a tremendous, tremendous amount of, of customer data. And the, what I've seen over the last, I don't know, 20 years, a, a couple of things. Um, we're all more dependent on information technology, and, the, and that dependence has grown and accelerated across all industries, and especially over the last 18 months. Um, as Tim said, the threats have evolved. The bad actors are more sophisticated now, and now include nation states, terrorist groups, criminal organizations. They're more organized again, 
they're more sophisticated than they were before. And a, a lot of the um, ransomware technologies have been um, bolstered by the ability to monetize, right? Bitcoin has been an enabling technology that, um, you know, when, when it was first um, introduced, I really didn't tie those two things together because of that. It's anonymous, and, and, um, and again, it makes these attacks more profitable. And kind of what's it mean for the security function, and Tim touched some of these things. Um, the, the cybersecurity function is receiving more investment, and as Tim said, board, board involvement, the amount of auditing and, and regulatory regula regulations that, that's been imposed. Um, and they, they, they need to ingrain security as part of the culture and be secure by design and kind of drive continuous innovation and vigilance into the function to stay, to try to stay current and, and try, to, try to protect because they're always kind of one step ahead. So that's kind of what I've seen as uh, what's, what's changed. Thank you, Craig and Jason. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. So my name is Jason McGinnis and as Hamesh shared, uh, I am the president and CEO of Silver Sky. Uh, Service Guy is uh, a managed service provider primarily focused on helping secure small and mid-sized organizations and really help them with their security uh, risk mitigation, both from uh, monitoring, security implementation, and also some, some compliance management. Uh, I have been in the role or I've been in security field for probably 20, we'll give it, we'll call it 20 years. Uh, and a lot of the same things that Tim and Craig have, have mentioned uh, clearly have seen things get a lot more sophisticated. You know, I think back when we were first trying to provide basic ser uh, security protection to small banks, small financial institutions, we were really looking at things like making sure they had a firewall and making sure we had good antivirus in place. So really kind of two, two areas that we would focus on. And, and even though we talked about defense in depth, it was pretty simple. You flash forward 20 years, clearly the, the attacks are much more sophisticated. Uh, the kind of the surface area of attacks, you know, almost looks like a block of Swiss cheese, right? You have attacks coming from outside. You have attacks coming from inside. Uh, you have home networks that you've got to be worried about. You have BYOB. You've got IoT. Uh, you've got every flavor of, of uh, tablet and phone. Um, and then you add cloud and cloud apps and cloud computing to that. It's just a very much more complicated environment that we're in. And you have much more complicated attackers. Um, I do say that there's some good though, right? We have, I think, much more general awareness of the risk of security than we did 20 years ago. And it's not nearly as challenging to convince an organization that they need to be doing something. Uh, there still is a lot of education, I think, that still needs to happen about what the right thing is and how to mitigate risk and how to really assess risk. But it's not so much a conversation about trying to convince someone that there is a risk. It really is much more about finding the, the right way to protect them and the right way to try to mitigate those risks. So again, thanks so much and team for letting us, uh, letting me participate. Glad to be here.